Okay, welcome back. This is now part four of our uh, lecture on uh, introduction to uh, stress. Part one, we, we introduced the notion of stress. Part two, we derived the Cauchy stress tensor um, and proved the fundamental Cauchy, uh, Cauchy's fundamental theorem. Part three, we looked at stress equilibrium and uh, determined the symmetry of the Cauchy stress tensor. Now, in this part, we're going to look at transformations and principal directions and a couple other uh, leftover topics. So we've established that stress is a second order tensor. So it has to obey all of the, it has to have all the properties that any other tensor has. So that means it has to obey the transformation law. And you'll do examples of this in homework. Uh, but basically, sigma prime equals A sigma A transpose, or Q sigma A transpose, or R sigma R transpose, whatever, whatever notation we use for the coordinate transformation matrix. Um, Not much more to say on that, right? Trans stress transforms like any other tensor. Okay, principal stresses and principal stress directions. Now, this is a really important, 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 important topic. I guarantee you, you're going to see this over and over again, and you're going to see this on the exam. So, back to our continuum body here. We have a point P in our, in our body, and we slice it on some surface described by the surface normal N. In the general case, the traction vector is not going to be parallel with the normal direction. But there are certain planes where I can slice through point P, where the traction vector is going to be parallel with the normal vector. Um, another way of saying this is there's going to be some normal where stress just this the action of the stress tensor is to just scale the normal vector either make it longer or make it shorter we'll discuss this more uh, in a little more detail in our review of eigenvectors and eigenvalues um, but the directions uh, where this happens are the principal directions of the stress tensor and the scaling factors are the principal stresses, right? Now, obviously, the principal stresses uh, are the eigenvalues of the stress tensor, and the principal directions have to be the eigenvectors. Uh, so to solve for the principal stresses and principal directions, we solve the eigen uh, uh, value equation. Right, sigma ij nj equals sigma. This is a scalar sigma. Notice it doesn't have any indices. So this is a scalar times the normal. Tensor times the normal equals a scalar times the normal. And there's going to be three ends, three vectors, uh, where that's true. Now, because stress is a symmetric uh, positive definite tensor, we're guaranteed to have real eigenvectors, which is nice. Okay, we'll work this out together. So from this uh, theory, we can also derive this notion of uh, stress invariance. So these are scalar values that don't uh, change when you do a coordinate transformation. It doesn't matter what coordinate system I 
transform my stress into, these three invariants will always be the same. One of them is the trace. Right? The, di the sum of the diagonal elements of the stress will always be constant no matter what frame I put it in. The second invariant is uh, this funny looking term, the trace of the stress one half, the trace of the, the stress squared minus the trace of the stress squared. Right, pay attention to where your parentheses are. So this is sigma times sigma, take the trace of that, and this is the trace of sigma, and then square the scalar. And the third invariant is the determinant of the stress tensor. Now in terms of the principal stresses, these are really easy to, to calculate, right? Of course, the trace is just the, the trace, that doesn't change. Um, the second invariant, uh, is the sum of all the, the possible combinations of the terms, of the diagonal terms. <coughs> and of course, the determinant of a diagonal matrix or a diagonal tensor is just, the, is just the product of the diagonals. In particular, this uh, second invariant becomes very important when we talk about plasticity. Um, J2 flow theory is uh, has to do with invariance of the uh, deviatoric stress tensor, which I think we'll talk about right here on the next uh, the next slide. Okay, so the normal stresses is, is the hydrostatic pressure acting on the point, right? So the hydrostatic pressure pressure is one third of the trace. Right. All right. So this is what we call the hydrostatic stress uh, tensor. It's a diagonal tensor with the same value on all three, and that's the the, the component of the pressure of the f stress due to hydrostatic changes in pressure. Right. This is the part that's going to change if I take something from atmospheric and drop it to the bottom, atmospheric pressure, and drop it to the bottom of the ocean. The deviatoric stress is what's left after you subtract out the hydrostatic stress. All right, and it's obviously if I subtract this out, my trace of this uh, goes to zero. So the deviatoric stress has a zero trace. All right, so it's just my stress minus my hydrostatic pressure times the identity matrix. All right. And as a last topic, and, and again, the deviatoric stress, this is very important again for plasticity. Uh, you may, you know, think about it in terms of dislocation motion. A hydrostatic, a purely hydrostatic loading will never cause dislocations to move in your in a metal in a crystalline solid you need shear for dislocation motion so the deviatoric part of stress is what controls plasticity in crystalline materials to a first approximation so there's some other stress definitions that we may come across but it's useful for you just to be aware of them so cauchy stress what we've been talking about relates the forces in a under in the current body. So if our body deforms, uh, it's the forces in our deformed body with our areas in our deformed body. It's the three D equivalent of true stress that you learned about uh, in undergrad. But there's other ways we can define stress. Uh, the most important ones are the Piola-Kirchhoff stresses, the first Piola-Kirchhoff and the second Piola-Kirchhoff stress. So the first relates the force in the current configurations with areas in the reference, right? This is the, 
3D equivalent of engineering stress. Right? So we always take our areas before we deform our body, but our forces acting on those areas uh, in the current. And uh, this is a non-symmetric stress tensor. Right? And then we can do the second piola kirchhoff stress, which is force in the reference and stress in the reference. Um, and again, don't worry too much about these. These are just definitional uh, things for you. But if you read the literature, you'll see the first and second piola kirchhoff stresses. The first piola kirchhoff stress is, again, very important for crystal plasticity. Um, formulations and second piola kirchhoff stress comes up a lot whenever you're solving mechanics problems on a fixed grid right where you're not calc where you're not explicitly keeping track of uh, the incremental deformation steps okay the next part is on to kinematics so we will oops going the wrong way Onto kinematics, so ref reference and, and deformation configurations.